Hello, my name is Lin Yu, and I'm a junior student in nuclear engineering and radiology science from University of Michigan. I work for SURE program, and my faculty advisor is Alec Thomas. Okay, here is my slide. Our topic is determination of radiation spectrum from a tabletop laser using RDTX. In order to start the experiment, we need the radiation source. In this case, Relativistic electron beams are used as radiation source. The technique used is known as a laser weak field acceleration. The basic principle of this is use an intense ultra-short laser pulse to displace electrons in a low-density plasma, rather like a boat pushing through water leaving waves in its wake, in a manner like in a manner analogous to a surfer being propelled to synchronization with an ocean wave. The electron plasma waves generated in the wake of the laser pulse can be used to serve an electron beam to relativistic energies. Then, an angulator is used to force the electron generated to undergo oscillations. And the transverse oscillation of the electron beam results in radiation emission at double Doppler upshifted photon energy extending to the hard X-ray or gamma ray range. This kind of radiation produced in an angulator is very intense and concentrated in a narrow energy band in the spectrum. As for the angulator, it's composed of a dipole magnet with a periodic structure. Dipole magnet here is a homogeneous magnetic field. Particle motion in that field will be circular in a plane perpendicular to the field and collinear to the direction particle motion. Thus, a particle injected into a dipole magnet will travel on a circular or helical trajectory. This static magnet field is alternating along a length and of the angulator with a wavelength lambda. Together with the magnetic field strength, an angulator perimeter K is introduced to describe its feature. We have to notice here, though the electron is relativistic, but the Euro description of the angulator is classical, which means the angulator can be seen as a black box. An electron enters this box and an electromagnetic pulse exists through a small exist slate. Here, the slate should be small enough such that only the main core pass, so that the, slides, the side lobes may be ignored. So why we use angulator? because it can provide several orders of magnitude higher flux than a simple bending magnet. For example, an angulator with n periods, the brightness can be up to n square more than the bending magnet. The intensity is enhanced up to a factor of n at harmonic wavelength due to the constructive interference of the field emitted during the n radiation period. Here is the theoretical model of the angulator. As we can see on the picture, it's a simple planar design. Each row of the dipole magnets are in a Halbach 3D array. So what about RDTX? RDTX is a C++-based code for calculating accurate radiation spectrum from charged particle motion, and it's used to model uh, and predict experimental measurements using the Her Hercule laser. And a software named WX widgets is used to generate the operation interface, where parameter can be easily adjusted to what user prefer. Here is the operating interface of RDTX. By running this code, the spectrum can be generated. My job is checking and comparing multiple spectrum using quantitative analyze methods so that the feature of the radiation spectrum can be determined. Following are some examples. First is the determination of relation between FWHM, and, uh, which means full width at half maximum, and a spatial or momentum sprite. Here, all the sprite follows Gaussian distribution. In this precise, some MATLAB functions are needed to be compiled to generate the FWHM volume and the spectrum. Here is the code for FWHM. Then we 
we need to generate a spectrum under certain general setting. Here, the time step means the resolution. The higher this number is, the higher resolution can be obtained. However, higher resolution means lower program efficiency. Then, by combining, by combining all results, we can see some relation. The FWHM almost keeps steady with momentum spreading in X while keep increasing in Z direction. As for the spatial spread in Z, it's almost steady with a maximum 5% fluctuation around a constant. Next is spectrum generation with theta beam scattering. Because of the efficiency of the codes, one particle test is done to determine whether the code functions well. This is the spectrum with the theta spread from minus zero to minus zero point zero two to zero. And uh, this one is theta equal to zero. And this one is from theta from zero to zero point zero two. All the results are just as expected. Then five hundred particles are involved. This, range, this one is ranged from 0 to 0 0.02, and uh, this one from minus 0 0.02 to 0, and this is ranging from minus 0 0.02 to 0 0.02. However, in order to get a close results to a realistic situation rather than just theory, some modifications need to be done. My job is doing this adjustment. For example, here is the modification of the magnet magnetic field. In the original codes, the magnetic field between gaps is regarded as uniform, so we need to modify the field to be more accurate. Here are the representative image of the original field. By solving some differential equations, we can get the analytics results. Then we just insert them into the codes and modify some parameter. Here is the result of magnetic field. Because of the power and accurate simulation the code does, we believe it will be widely used in, the, in this field to generate radiation spectrum. Also, some new functions and better model will be added that generates the streamline of the magnetic field. Finally, I'd like to thank uh, Professor Alec Thomas and the College of Engineering who gave give me this chance. Thank you.